Hello everybody, this is the Macintosh here, and this video is going to show you how to replace a motherboard in a computer. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn off the computer and take it apart by removing the case lid. Once you get inside, you're going to want to start by removing your PCI or PCIe devices. You can do that by pushing the little slot and taking them out like that. Next we're going to remove the processor, but what you do by pulling the little latch and pushing it up and then pulling back this piece here and then you can remove the processor with your fingers. It's important to try to not touch the bottom of the processor as the oil and grease from your fingers may damage it. Next, you can begin to unplug some of the cables that might be in your way as you do other things like that. Now we're going to remove the RAM, which you can do by pulling back on the little slots and pulling the RAM out. You may have either two or four RAM slots on your motherboard. Next, we're going to begin removing cables like this. So you have all your cables at the bottom for your front panel connectors and your 24 pin which was the first cable that I unplugged. Then you're going to want to unscrew all the screws on your motherboard. And once you do that you can go ahead and just move the cables out of the way and remove the motherboard itself like this. This is the old motherboard, we're going to put this aside. Next we're going to pop out the back panel, which you can do by just pushing and it should go into the case like that. Make sure we that you are careful because it can be sharp and you don't want to cut your fingers. The new motherboard should come with a new back panel, just go ahead and get that out. And once you do that, you can go ahead and just push it in like this, which you also have to be careful with because it's also sharp. Then you can just go ahead and carefully slide the new motherboard in like this. It may be kind of hard to push in because of the grounding things on the back panel, but once you screw it in it should be fine. So you're going to go, you're going to want to go ahead and just screw in all of the screws like this. It may be easier to go in a more diagonal pattern like this to make sure the motherboard doesn't move as you screw in the other screws. Some motherboards, actually most motherboards on the market today, uh, you put on top of standoffs instead of directly on the case, but this case is not designed to use standoffs, so I didn't need to install them here. Next you're going to go ahead and just plug in your cables. So at the bottom you have to plug in your front USB connectors and your power LED power button and hard drive LED lights and all of that stuff at the bottom. Also your front panel audio connectors and all of that down there at the bottom. This is going to be slightly different with every case and every motherboard. Next you can take your SATA cables from your optical drive and your hard drives or whatever type of storage devices you have and plug in the 24 pin or 20 pin cable there. Next open the socket to the motherboard for the processor and lift it up and you can pop out the protective shield there and you can get rid of that like that. Next get your processor back out the processor has two notches like this which will help you put it in properly you just drop it right in there and it should fit perfectly without you having to apply any pressure. 
then you can go ahead and close this and then make sure it's lined up with the little bolt there and go ahead and push that latch back down now it's time to reinstall the RAM so go ahead and open up the RAM slots and just push it in this should take more force than most other things as soon as it snaps back in that means the RAM is properly installed once again you may have either two or four RAM slots this motherboard has four now you can go ahead and reinstall your PCI devices this is a PCIe NVIDIA GT440 graphics card go ahead and just put that in there like that I like to put this cable in last because it gets in my way a lot this is for the processor next you just put on your thermal paste my preferred thermal paste is Arctic Silver 5 but I'm going to use Cooler Master Thermal Paste in this demonstration you should put some right in the middle of the processor in the video I put a little bit more than what you usually are supposed to put so just try to get about a grain of rice or maybe a little bigger next install your heatsink you can use whatever heatsink you want this one is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus which is a very popular heatsink because it's relatively cheap and cools really well every heatsink is installed a little bit differently so I'm not going to go into great detail here but as the caption earlier showed make sure that you have your proper backplate installed on the motherboard before you try to install the heatsink and if you're using an OEM case like this which means you bought it right from the company chances are you won't have an opening in the back of your case to install the back plate so make sure you do that before you install the motherboard it's good to screw things in at a diagonal pattern like this to make sure everything's as close to equally tight as you can get some heat sinks and fans will use push pins instead of screws screws are definitely a lot easier in my opinion but some people think otherwise Now you have to plug in the fan to this connector on the motherboard. This heatsink is impossible to install without removing the fan first, which is why I removed it. So you go ahead and plug that in right there. It should be a four pin connector. Then you can just put your fan onto your heatsink. Like that. and you're good to go now we have a little bit of a sound test here so you can see that the computer works this is how you can test that your computer works by just turning it on you can see that so far it looks like everything works I reinstalled this exhaust fan You can adjust fan speeds in your BIOS. It's a little bit of a sound comparison so you can hear much quieter is on the outside. There's a back panel with all your connectors on it, and there you go. Thank you for watching, please subscribe.